started to flood, flood the dams yet because the work in progress, they just, they were gonna thin out more trees and clear the lake better. But they were worried that the, uh, the Russians would send spy, not the Russians, the Germans would send secret guys in here, maybe blow up the dam or something. <laughs> so they decided to go ahead and fill the dam. They just, I, I don't know the exact reason, but something they felt safer filling the dam with water and the heck with trimming out all the trees. So when they did that, oh, part of the reason was it was the wrong time of the year to mess up the striped bass. They were gonna trap them up above the dam and they were wanting to let them get back into the ocean and then fill up the lake. But they trapped by big volumes of uh, stripers up in the lake and then they had no way out except ones that might go through the generators that, that would get chopped up a little bit, killed. So they became landlocked striped bass in the Sandy Cooper River system in Lake Marion's and Lake Moultrie. And they no longer had a place to swim way up in gravel land, sand and gravel bottoms and lay their eggs and spawn. And but, but they marginally they could, but they not like normal. Uh, they could just marginally get by, or, but they weren't doing good. And they kind of became, well, they were landlocked. But then the State Game and Fish Commission would take little baby fish, put them in hatchery, well, eggs. They, well, they get a mature female, mm -hmm. squeeze the eggs out of her, put these in a fish hatchery, raise the little stripers, and they started releasing them in places like Lake Lanier mm -hmm. and other big North Georgia reservoirs and other states. So they produced these big stripers in freshwater lakes that had never even been in saltwater before. So man kind of messed up their ecology. Yeah. And um, they they did a similar thing on this river system. They built the uh, uh, what's the one north of here? Um, the big lake. Hartwell. Hartwell Dam. Yeah. Back I think in the 40s or mm -hmm. something like that. And that messed up the stripers. They built the Russell Dam I think in the 50s or something like that. Or maybe I got them backwards. And then in the 80s, they built this one. So they had these landlocked stripers between these two reservoirs. And this one, they can't live by themselves and swim up Coldwater Creek and spawn and lay their eggs and survive. But they live for whatever fish lives for 20 or 30, 50 years maybe. And the fish in here are stocked. Right. And all three of these big lakes, they're stocked. And the State Game and Fish Commission guys monitor the records of the fish catches and things, and they know what's going on. And also these blueback herring, this used to be a river, now it's a lake, but blueback herring live in here, and the stripe, stripers love to feed on those. Yeah. So it's a whole new kind of ball game. Yeah. And So the big stripers helped control the blueback herring. They would take over and there'd just be thousands and millions of herring all over, but they eat them up. So it's a good balance and it's good for sportsmen. Yeah. So that's what I learned.